Good morning. Welcome to October 1st, 1780. I'd ask that you go back in time and think about what you are seeing. We're fighting the British. They are here to cross the mighty Catawba River at Greenlee Ford. The over mountain men will be crossing and coming out on this side of the river. We don't have a time frame for how long it took them in 1780 to cross. So they're at their own pace. So good morning once again, and you've witnessed uh, what actually occurred in 1780 on October 1st, except if you can imagine there were a thousand patriots that crossed the river. At this time, I'd like to introduce reenactor Steve Ricker, who's going to tell you what it was like that day, October 1st, 1780. We had crossed the mountains many days. We rode in the rain. We got to Charles McDowell's house. He was so gracious to us. We took the rails, top rails off his fence and built fires to get warm and dry. Pulled some corn. They fed us what they could, brought a little cattle in for us. And I remember as we camped there that afternoon, there's a group of men come riding in down the Yakin River led by a guy by the name of Benjamin Cleveland, big old guy. Now, I'd never met the gentleman, but I'd heard of him. They come riding in and, man, our army was growing. Now, we tried to rest that afternoon, but the rain never really let up on us. But we got intelligence that Patrick Ferguson was camped at a place called Gilbert Town, not too far from here. So, the next morning, we all took to the saddle, and we come riding across this river. It was a sight to see the thundering of the horse hoofs as we crossed this river, the spraying of the water. Everybody was so excited because we had been joined by the men up in the Yakin River. We had been joined by all the local patriots here, and we was headed to Gilbert Town to put an end to Ferguson. But you can imagine our disappointment when he is already gone when we got there. But we kept pushing, and eventually we found him on a little rocky ridge called Kings Mountain. Didn't take long to put an end to this threat that he had sent to us, hour and five minutes, as a matter of fact. That's the story of the men that crossed this river on this date in 1780. Our story. Oh, what a beautiful story it is. Because those men that crossed, they wrote it for us with their sweat and blood. They crossed because they would not live under the hand of tyranny. They crossed because they were free to do so. Now, 40 years ago, there was a group of people just like us. I think they actually started at Fort Watauga across the mountains at first. And they started following the footsteps of the over mountain men all the way to Kings Mountain. A few years later, they moved on up to Abington where William Campbell and the Virginia boys had mustered. And they walked every step all the way to Kings Mountain, every step. Several years ago, there was a group of us decided that we needed to carry this story on. 
So we quit walking quite as much and started talking more. We started telling the story to everybody. Everybody that would listen all up and down this trail. Last year, from Abington, Virginia to Kings Mountain, South Carolina, we told this story to close to 10,000 people. And almost probably 8,000 or more of us fourth and fifth graders. <clears throat> now, I was thinking about what I was going to say today. We done a program right over here at Freedom High School yesterday for a massive group of kids. <coughs> a thousand, as a matter of fact. My wife asked me several years ago, she said, why do you do this? What gives you this passion, this drive to do this? And the only thing that come to mind when she asked me that question is that I want to carry a spark from the past into a flame for the future. Yesterday, I got to witness a thousand little flames sitting in front of us listening to this story. And as we travel down this trail, each and every one of us with a passion for this story and a passion for what these men accomplished, we don't just do it in honor of them. We're leaving little embers behind because each one of us, especially a lot of us, we're getting older, as you can tell. And eventually, our little spark's going to go out. But all these little embers that we've left down this trail, all the way to Kings Mountain with this story, all these children, it's my wish that some of them will bust into a flame and they will carry the story on. That's why we do this. That's why we push on, because this truly is the story of the American spirit. It tells us who we are as a people when we're threatened. When we come together and say, no, we're free men, we're free women. We do as we please. A few years ago, when we crossed the Watauga River on the other side of the mountains, there's some of us sitting around drying out. As a matter of fact, it was last year. I told some of the guys, I said, I want to, I want to cross the Catawba River this year. They said, why? I said, because I can. Yeah. Because I can. And the reason I can do that is because those men that crossed this river here on that day, today, they give us that freedom. That's right. Every veteran from that point on that has sweat and bled for this country has given us the freedom to be here today, each and every one of us. So, anytime somebody tells you or asks you why, just look at them and say, because I can. It's that simple. Now, this is our 40th year of this Over Mountain March. And this is a special year for us because I think I, I lost track. This is our, what, ninth year? Guys, not the ninth year, but nine years for some of us. This is the first year that we've crossed three rivers. Every year for the last nine years, we always cross the Watauga River. I mean, that's just a given. They always know we're going to cross that river. But as of last year, this spot, in honor of the men that come across here, we're going to do it every year, Lord willing. We're going to cross right here on this day, the Over Mountain Victory Trail Association, because we can. It's that simple. And I want to invite each and every one of you to join us. You can sign up for membership. You can join us walking the trail. You can even dress funny like us want to, like we do if you want to, and wade the river. Or you don't even have to. But what we do, we need all the support we can get in any form, any form of support you want. I'm not talking about just money and membership. I'm talking about moral support. Look at the people that turned out to watch us wade the river. This is great. This is great. Of course, you know, I'll have to be honest, sometimes we draw half this much of the crowd just walking through the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> but in all honesty, some of us will stand right in the middle of the Walmart parking lot and do this story. 
But I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out and supporting us. And uh, I want to thank everybody that helped make this possible today. But above all, I want to thank the Almighty because he let the river run down enough that we could do it because it was really questionable for the last few days. And I want to thank everybody, each and every, each and every person that came in behind us across this river because I told everybody, I said, you know, this is one scenario I'm not going to be in charge of. This is one time when everybody truly are their own captain. If you go in that river, it's because you decided to, not because I decided for you. But I want, to, I want you guys to give each and every one of these people a hand because today they made it happen. Thank you. I'd like to thank, like Steve, thank everybody for being out here. In the 18th century, when they gave a shout uh, or were happy about something, they did huzzah. So what I want you to do is I want all of you to help us, and we're going to give a great big three huzzahs for the river crossing and for everybody that crossed the river. And this is four, four rivers I've been in and I fell twice. So I, I did well today, I didn't fall. But we're going to do the huzzahs. So you ready? Hip, hip. Hoo-zah! Hip, hip! Hoo-zah! Hip, hip! Hoo-zah! Thank you. Now, in remembrance of the crossing and those who made their sacrifice in 1780, I'd like to introduce uh, George Cobb, Reverend George Cobb, who will lead us in prayer, portraying Samuel Doak. Almighty God, who delivered Moses and his people from the bondage of Egypt, and by whose providential hand the waters of the Red Sea were parted. We give thee thanks for the protection and safe deliverance of our beloved patriots as they crossed the waters of the Catawba River. We trust that thou wilt protect their families and their loved ones who untiringly defend against enemies who would destroy our land and infringe our God-given liberty. This we pray in the powerful name of thy beloved Son, who calmed the angry waters of the Galilean Sea. Amen and amen. amen. You may want to give uh, the RTC a little room as they present our colors. Please stand. Please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order. Coach. Right wheel, right turn, march. Come on, Mike. March. Come on, Mike. Both of these young folks are descendants of over mountain men, Robert Penland and Samuel Alexander. Penland is their sixth great grandfather. Thank you guys for being here. And now I'd like to introduce Morganton Mayor Mel Cohen. Thank you, Ed. First, I want to thank all the people that dealt with the reenactment of all of the events uh, and those that worked over the weekend, last weekend, and all the bad weather. Uh, it's been a great, great uh, event for Burke, Historic Burke Foundation for all the citizens in the area, Burke County, Morganton, uh, and beyond. It was a, it's a great time, and we need to be proud of what our, our heritage, over a thousand young people saw an event yesterday 
People were asking me if the schools saw anything about this. Well, they did yesterday, over a thousand. I'm uh, going to talk about Thomas Jefferson. 42 years after the Battle of Kings Mountain, he wrote 32 powerful words. These 43 words, I'm sorry, 43 words define indelibly why we celebrate our memorable victory there. The 43 words also define indelibly our memorable victory at the Battle of Cowpens, only a few months after Kings Mountain. And at the Battle of Cowpens, our patriots were led by General Daniel Morgan, whom we honor every day by the very name that we chose for this great city of Morganton. Now, I will read President Jefferson's words about Kings Mountain to you very slowly so that we can all savor these words. Here are the 43 words of Thomas Jefferson about our victory at Kings Mountain. I remember well the deep and grateful impression made on the minds of everyone by that memorable victory. It was the joyful annunciation of that turn of the tide of a success which terminated the Revolutionary War with the seal of our independence. So wrote Thomas Jefferson, the very same Thomas Jefferson who had written our Declaration of Independence in 1776. Thanks to all the Overmountain men and other patriots for what they did on October 7th, 1780. And thanks to all of you for being here to celebrate what they did at Kings Mountain, as well as to celebrate how they got there and what is now and forever in our minds for the Overmountain Victory National Historic Trail. Huzzah! Huzzah! Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to now introduce Group Superintendent of the National Park Service, John Slaughter, to talk about partnerships. What a glorious day. So partnerships, um, you know, I had something planned, but uh, there was something that hit me when, uh, when Mr. Ricker was talking about uh, the men coming together and, the, and whether it was Cleveland's men or Campbell's men or Sevier's men and everybody coming together here at, in Morganton at Quaker Meadows. And I thought, you know, isn't that, isn't that the ultimate partnership? When you start looking at men from different areas and, and men and women from different areas and different, different backgrounds, coming together for a similar cause and, and, and really paying the ultimate sacrifice, right? That sacrifice so that uh, future generations, generations that may not fully understand that sacrifice or even why that sacrifice was made, but so that those future generations can enjoy the freedoms that those men envisioned 235 years ago. It's pretty incredible when you think about it. When we stand here today, it's so easy to get wrapped up in all the, whether it's the politics or whether it's the, whether it's the booming going on down the road. <laughs> um, it, it's, really, it's really easy in this day and age to get wrapped around the axle about small things, simple things. You know, whether it's just how are you going to get the kids to school tomorrow, or get them to soccer practice, or, you know, how are you going to make sure the dog gets fed when you go on vacation? You know, these things that seem so important to us, and yet 235 years from now, what are we going to think about those? So what we do in the National Park Service is pretty special. I imagine a few of you have been to some national parks. You're standing, you're standing along one right now on the Overmountain Victory National Historic Trail, part of our national trail system. And uh, the National Park Service this year, you may or may not know, in 2016, coming up right now, we're celebrating. We, we've got a two-year birthday. That's how we do it in the Park Service. We celebrate things for as long as we can. But we're celebrating our, our 100th birthday, 100th birthday in the National Park Service. Absolutely. And yesterday was, was just an, a, a phenomenal event to be able to um, pass out over 1,000 National Park passes to fourth graders in the Every Kid in a Park program, the single largest 
single day distribution of park passes in the National Park Service to date, right here in Morganton. <laughs> and, and that really couldn't be done with modern day partnerships. And I certainly hope in 50 years and in 100 years, people will look back at the partnership between the H historic Burke Foundation and the city of Morganton and Burke County and the National Park Service and the Overmountain Victory Trail Association, and they will say that's when we started owning our heritage as a community and as a, a, as a um, partner of the National Park Service. And with that, I'd like to present, Mayor, I'd like to present you with, the, uh, Mr. Ricker also mentioned that this is the 40th anniversary of the um, Overmountain, the, the Overmountain Victory Trail Association in the march. And we've got a special coin here. It's a 40th anniversary Over Mountain Victory National Historic Trail coin and the, uh, the association on the backside, limited edition, especially for you. How about that? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. But I would, also, I would also be remiss if I did not recognize two individuals that I will tell you, if any of you have met them, and I know a number of you have, um, and have and have had the opportunity, whether it's a pleasure or whether you don't call it a pleasure, uh, to work with these amazing individuals, local community um, activists, and and wonderful citizens of your community, and the greatest ambassadors for the Over Mountain Victory Trail Association and the National Park Service here in Burke County. Um, I would be remiss if I did not give a special thank you, and one of our centennial pins recognizing the centennial of the National Park Service to both Bryant and Linda Lindsay. Yeah. If you could if you could come over here, we we need we need to make sure that everybody recognizes and gives you a great one. So remember, one of our one of our um, our logos for this for this centennial of the National Park Service, find your park. That's what it's all about. We issued a thousand national park passes to fourth graders. Yesterday, we're gonna be issuing a bunch more of them down the road. But for each and every one of you, find your park. It's not just a national park. You've got an amazing park at Catawba Meadows right up the road here. It's just an incredible, incredible asset to your community, an incredible asset to this nation. Find your park, and if you can't find your park, build your park, make it happen. Get engaged with your community and make these things happen. Thank you. Before we go any further, I would like to also introduce our <laughs> Foothills Christian School Band, who is our local uh, fife and drum band, and introduce Josiah Comfort. Please yeah. stand. Yeah. Karis Kerstetter on the fife. <laughs> Julia Daniel. Mariah Kerstetter and their director, Melissa Kerstetter. Thank you. So we now have our own, very own, Burke County Fife and Drum. Who's all? Who's all? So one of the things, Whatever they're doing, they're getting closer. they are getting closer. So my name is Ed Phillips and I'm the director of tourism for Burke County. And as part of putting this program together, I think it's important to also look at the impact, the cultural impact of what occurred here in 1780 and how it has reflected on our community today. From Freedom High School, how many of you knew that Freedom High School was named for the Overmountain men? Independence Drive, which is located in front of Freedom High School, named for the Overmountain men. So in thinking of this, I wanted to tell you that it was the early pioneers who settled around the Catawba Valley where they carved out lives from the hillsides and the rivers. They were settlers. They came here to avoid religious persecution and to enjoy a free way of life in their new world. North Carolina Governor Zebulon Vance described the area as, quote, their chief business of life here in Western North Carolina in the frontier was enjoyment. It was a peaceful place, relatively speaking. But the persecutors followed them here, and the settlers vowed to fight or live free or die trying. 
The over-mountain men left their homes, their families, and many never returned. But they left an everlasting legacy and a tribute to the strong will and determination in their descendants, some of whom are here today. And I would like to name some of the last names of the folks here today, and I'm sure I'll leave out some, but if you would either stand or raise your hand as I read these names. Tate. McDowell. Irwin. Greenlee. Collett. McJimsey. Avery. The Scotch, the Irish, the English, the Germans, and others from far places settled here. The land had a reputation for growing corn, small grains, livestock, and for raising strong men and women who would become pivotal leaders in our region and in our nation. Judges, senators, and I'm not talking about the judge's restaurant, <laughs> and even lawyers are well-known and respected descendants of these over-mountain men and their families. Today we are grateful for their sacrifices and proud that their namesakes are among our everyday lives. As you leave here today, I ask that you remember them. I would also like to thank others who participated in, in the historic Burke Foundation members and staff. We already recognize Linda and Bryant, but also Almond Carr and Mary Lou Furr. The Over Mountain Victory Trail Association members and reenactors. Andrea and Pat Kaiser, who made the original walk from Abington to Kings Mountain in 1975. Of course, John Slaughter, the City of Morganton representatives, City Council members, Judges Riverside Restaurant and Fulham Water Enterprises, Freedom High School and the Burke County School System, our ROTC members, the Burke County Rescue Squadron who assisted today in case there was a uh, high water, Burke County government, the Morganton News Herald who ran numerous articles for us promoting this, thank you very much, and also Dr. Mark McMahon from the Burke Animal Clinic who provided the cannon that we heard earlier. And at that, you're free to enjoy lunch. If you have a pre-purchased ticket, you may line up up here, and they also have some other lunches for purchase. A portion of that uh, price goes to the Historic Burke Foundation. And that is the end of the program, and we thank you all for coming.